Hello students, today's woman of the day is somebody named Barbara Jordan and this book is called What Do You Do With a Voice Like That? And on the front cover this is a, a drawing of Barbara Jordan and it's written by Chris Barton with illustrations by Akua Holmes. Growing up in the fifth ward of Houston, Texas, Barbara Jordan stood out. She may have looked like other kids, she may have acted like other kids, but she sure didn't sound like other kids. Not with that voice of hers. That voice, that big, bold, booming, crisp, clear, confident voice. It caused folks to sit right up, stand up straight, and take notice. What do you do with a voice like that? Well, first you give that voice something to say. Barbara recited poetry at church. She memorized speeches for school. She entered oratory contests and in 1952 won a trip to Chicago, the first time she'd ever left Texas. So she's from Texas and she got to go to Chicago. Barbara was proud of herself and proud of her voice. It was laying a path for her. But where would that path lead? <clears throat> On Sunday evenings, Barbara would talk things over with her grandpa Patton. Would she become a preacher like her father and like a mother and like her mother could have been, or a teacher like those who've encouraged her at Phyllis Wheatley High School? Or perhaps she'd become a lawyer. Not many black women had achieved that, but one who had done so, but one who had done so, visited Wheatley and gave a stirring speech. Being a lawyer would be a marvelous use of her voice. But before that can happen, what's the next thing you do with a voice like that? So she was thinking about becoming a lawyer. You give it knowledge to work with. College opened Barbara's eyes to how the country was changing and how it wasn't. She learned how to find facts for herself, debate important issues, defend good ideas, and dismantle bad ones. Her law classes challenged her more than anything she'd known. She hid her struggles from her classmates, studying long and hard and out of sight. So she, she studied in secret. She didn't let people know. And when she graduated, yes, Barbara became a lawyer. But being a lawyer bored her. She used a typewriter and a pen a lot more than she did her voice. And there was not enough work to occupy her time or her mind. So she wanted to use her voice, but at work, all she did was sit at her typewriter and her computer. And look, is she using her voice? Nope. There was, however, lots of political work that needed doing. In 1960, America was not as free or as fair a place as it could be. Barbara believed that politics could change that. So she got involved. One night, a scheduled speaker was absent and Barbara was asked if she could fill in. She said yes, and the audience loved her. They trusted her. Most important, they were inspired to do something, to get out and vote, and to help round up others and get them to vote. Remember voting, like how we would vote for the meditation videos? So you vote to show your opinion, to show what you want. Her voice made a difference. Barbara, bitten by the political bug, as she later put it, knew just what to do with a voice like that. So now she was using her voice for politics. She put it to public use. Barbara wanted more justice and more equality. She knew that these things began with more citizens sharing their own voices with their representatives in government. To make sure they got heard, Barbara decided to run for political office herself. So she ran and she lost and she ran again and she lost again. I have no intention of being a three-time loser, she said. So she ran a third time. Do you think she won this time? This time she won. As a Texas state senator, Barbara represented the people she'd grown up among. Before, she'd merely trusted in the political system. Now she was a part of it. When it works right, the system makes laws that improves our lives, and it makes sure that people, both the powerful and the powerless, follow those laws. Changes to our laws sometimes come from raising a ruckus outside the system. But Barbara's way does to make change from within. 
Sometimes that change, such as higher pay for farm workers and more aid for people who got hurt at work, took place in public through debates on the Senate floor. Debates in government. So that's the office. Sometimes it didn't. But Barbara got to know the other senators as individuals, and despite their differences, they came to relate to her in the same way. When each listened to what the other had to say, they could hear what was important to them, and it helped them all do a better job. Other Texans who had never paid any attention to women of color heard the wisdom in her voice, which helped them to do better too. Well then, what do you do with a voice like that? You share it with the entire country. In her next election in 1972, Barbara moved up to the United States Congress in Washington, D.C. Soon came a troubled, confusing time for the nation, for our country. President Nixon, it seemed, had broken the law, and Congress had to decide what to do about it. So the president was named Nixon, and he committed a crime. The president's at the top of the country, so it was like... Imagine if Dr. Sugar broke a school rule. What do you do? She's the principal. So, on a TV broadcast seen throughout the country, Barbara used her voice to show them the way. She reminded her audience that the Constitution is the document governing all the laws in the United States, and it applies to all of its people. So she said, hey, our country has rules. We all have to follow them. Then she explained in her big, bold, booming, crisp, clear, confident tone how the president's actions had gone against that document. So she said, even though he's the president, he broke the rule and he needs consequences. My faith in the Constitution is whole. It is complete. It is total. And I am not going to sit here and be an idle spectator to the diminution, the subversion, and the destruction of the Constitution. So those are some big words, but she's saying she's not going to let anybody break the rules. The president, Barbara said, must go. She thought the president should be fired. And then the president got fired. So because of her, the president was fired. That speech made Barbara a star. She shone like a bright light in a dark place. Barbara would have loved spending more nights under actual stars, camping and singing with her friends, but the public wanted more of her and more from her. So people wanted her to use her voice. She delivered, battling to protect the rights of Mexican-American voters and others against discrimination. There were whispers and rumblings of what might be next for Barbara. The U.S. Senate? The Supreme Court? Could she possibly become vice president? Who knew how high she might rise? So many people had so many hopes for Barbara. In her voice, they knew there was much to admire. How she spoke for those who had less power, how she spoke for those who possessed quieter strengths than her own, how she spoke for those who did not want to be limited by their weaknesses. But the public did not know that this last group included Barbara herself, who had been privately struggling with a nerve disease called multiple sclerosis since her earliest days in Congress. Wow, so all this time Barbara Jordan was sick. Nor did they know that Barbara had begun hearing another voice. This other voice was an inner voice. It instructed her that the right place for Barbara Jordan was not in any of the roles that the public had in mind. It told Barbara that the right place for her now was, was a citizen back home in Texas. So she wanted to move back home to Texas, where she's from. Even as her body failed her, Barbara's mind grew wiser and wiser, and she heeded what she heard. She went home. So this is a picture of her going back home. There, she became a teacher. Wow. College students, oh, so she taught college students, not kindergarten students. College students who intended to put their own voices to public use lined up for the chance to learn from her. In her classroom, you can bet that they sat right up, stood up straight, and took notice of the value she imparted. Equality, justice, and trust. Barbara used her voice to instruct and implore and inspire them not just to get out and do something, but to do the right thing. So she said you should always do the right thing. And when the occasion called for it, say at a basketball game with students such as those she taught, students like Barbara herself once had been, 
She even used her voice to raise a ruckus. So at the basketball game, she would use her voice to cheer and yell. Barbara Jordan's former students still move among us, striving to do work that would have made her proud, hearing echoes of her words as they try to make life better for all of us. For when it has been silenced, what do you do with a voice like that? We remember it and we honor it by making our own voices heard. So we can use our strong voices too. Just how we learned from Z that it's good to speak up. You don't have to just listen, you can also talk. But does speaking up mean you can yell? No, you can have a strong voice and speak up without yelling. And that's the end, our Barbara Jordan story. So now go ahead and get your paper because now we're gonna write our biography. And a biography is a writing about somebody else. So if you have your paper, first you fold it hot dog style and then hamburger style, and then one more time. And the reason I'm folding this is that so you have enough spaces for all of the parts. And then you open it back up, and you can draw a line down the middle, down the middle. At the top, you'll write biography. You always write your name, the date, the person's name. So her name is Barbara Jordan what she's famous for, and she was famous for her powerful voice, for the things that she said with her voice. You use these two sections to draw a picture of her, and then you write her your facts. So I wrote fact number one, she worked in the government. So the government is what rules over our country. It has our president, for example, and remember she wasn't the president, but her words were so powerful that she got the president fired. She worked in the government. Fact number two, she was a teacher. She became a teacher, so that's what I wrote here. She was a teacher. Fact three, she got sick. Remember in the story, it said that she had a disease called multiple sclerosis? So a lot of the people we've been reading about, that's a fact about them, that they got sick. And lastly, another thing that's true of a lot of the people we've been learning about, she wanted equality. She wanted everybody to have equal rights. No matter what you look like, who you were, if you were a boy or a girl, she wanted equality. So in the description of this video, I included a scan of my work that you can copy, or you can write your own facts about her, four things you remember from the story. And I'll see your work on Class Dojo. Thank you for listening, and I hope I see you guys soon.